Alright, yeah guys, so welcome back to another edition of Crappy Pastas TV. Yes, Crappy Pastas TV. A series where I take a look at some of the most shittiest creepy pastas of all time. So yeah. As we left off we as we left off with the clockwork story, we or fan fiction as it's is it really should be a fan fiction. It has no right to be a creepy pasta, yeah, guys. So yeah. So far, we learned that Natalie was abused by her family, like, and pretty much abused by her dad and, and shit like that. So yeah. So now, where now she is. 16 now as we're about to start the second part of this episode yeah guys 3 a.m. school night Her mother was going to kill her. Oh my fucking god Is this how is this how we're gonna start part two of this story yeah guys? Or at least part two of this video say shit The girl known as Natalie was now 16 she was productive in high school close to the honor roll for once she felt calm and happy though like the usual she would occasionally become a hermit in the room a hermit what the hell is a hermit anyways I'm searching for a definition here guys one that would Hermes is one that retires from society and lives in solitude. Oh, so she, so she's she, she, sorry. So she's so she she separates herself from the rest of the world, basically. So yeah, hide away from her dad. Who still like to constantly yell and scream about the economy, money, politics, and all of the other bullshit that that she was flat out tired of hearing? Oh my god! Already all these years, and she still no wait, sorry, sorry, all these years, and her dad is still bitching about all that bullshit for real. Like God knows. Like, calm down, bro. You're, you're, pretty. Much, I could tell that you're pretty much getting into your forties, bro. For real. Probably late, probably late thirties, early forties. That's, that's what I think his age is. Like, calm down. Like, fuck. Her eyes started to feel heavy. She had an assignment to work on, but. That was no longer important to her. All that was in her mind was sleep. She closed her laptop after her eyes adjusted to the darkness slightly. She saw her old, worn down stuffed giraffe in the corner. She stared at it in complete and utter silence. Memories passed through her mind and she felt tears coming out of her eyes, but she quickly but quickly she blinked them back. No more breaking. She she thought to herself, but she continued to stare at it. What the fuck are you looking at? She said to the stuff object. Damn! Like for real. First you have memories of of your stuff draft. Then you're telling it to. Then you're asking it who the. What the fuck are you looking at? Like, for real. It's a stuffed giraffe, Nally. Like, you had memories of that... Of that toy. Girl, for real. Like, calm down for, for once. She said... To the stuff... Oh, yeah, I read that. It simply stared... Back with soft, black... Beady eyes... She shook her hand and stood up. She looked down. Sally 
at the little toy animal and gently picked it up in her arms. She cradled it and spoke softly to it. I'm, I'm sorry. Some tears ran down to her face. She petted rough short first softly as she lay down on her bed. She slowly went to sleep. She woke up with by the angry growls of her mother. Exhausted, she slowly opened one of her eyes. I can't believe I forgot to take that laptop away. You were I all night, weren't you? Now I saw it press her face deeper into the pillow, hugging her draft closer. She, her mother, sighed and walked out. She took a shout, or brushed her teeth, ate some breakfast, and she got dressed. She put on a gray and blue hoodie with fur inside her hood. It wasn't her favorite, but but it was the only one she had. Due to the others being washed, she put on her black jeans and some thin fashionable vo- fashionable boots. With the word fashionable being in 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 quotation and quote unquote fashionable, y'all guys. Finally, she went down the stairs to get driven to school. She hopped in the car, and her mom sped off. However, on her way there, due to a lack of sleep. She slowly put her head against the window of the car and began to drift off. Her dreams, or more accurately, nightmares, consist firstly of her physical abuse as a child and secondly of the sexual abuse she suffered in the hands of her own brother, Lucas. The abuse had lasted for four years before she had the guts to turn him away. She started twitching and cringing in her sleep, but her mother took no notice. Like, her mother never took notice. Suddenly, she jolted awake by the sound of her mother's voice. <sighs> Why didn't her mom notice this whole shit of her being, of Natalie being abused? Like, damn. For real. You should have known better. Like, like, you should have known that your daughter was being abused all these years and wanted to not notice, like, for real, like, you could have stood up, you could have at least defend her, like, you could have at least broken up with that bastard, for real. Like, oh boy, oh god, Ryan's awful, for real. Like, for real. You could have... You could have at least said something to defend her, but you didn't. Did you? Like, for real. It feels like I'm blaming the mother for not defending Natalie and shit like that. If When she's... Whenever she's getting... Abused or abused verbally or sexually. Oh my god. We're here, Mara says, with annoyance in her voice. Most likely from catching Natalie napping again. She looked at a large sign at the school which read Walkerville College Eight Institute for the Creative Fine Arts. She said she saw entirely Stepped out, putting her backpack on her shoulder. See ya. She was playing and closed the car door. She walked into school and chatted, and chatted with a couple of friends until she went up to a locker on the third floor. She grabbed her books and before the five minutes of the time was over, she ran to class. Her English teacher annoyingly puts her hand on Nally's desk. Where's your assignment, Miss Ouellette? And we found out that she has a French last name. Nally Ouellette. You can obviously tell that, that Nally herself is, is French just by hearing that last name. 
because Boulet is a French last name, or at least a French, or in some cases, French Canadian. So yeah, Nelly swallowed. I uh, forgot at home. Sorry, Miss. Hominuric? What the hell? Your time is up, Miss Ulet. Don't disappoint me. Nellie seemed puzzled by thought for a moment. She didn't know why, but those words seemed to melt through her. She simply, she, she simply ignored it and went back to listening to the lesson and falling asleep not too long after, of course. Later that day, she was heading to her locker for fourth period when suddenly her boyfriend Chris approached her. Hey, uh, talk to me after school, all right? She smiled. She loved talking to Chris. At the time, she didn't expect anything. Chris was always sweet to her. Aw, that's, that's pretty nice. That's nice to have somebody to talk to, Natalie. During her French class, Natalie failed to pay attention. Instead, she doodled things she loved to draw the most. Oh, boy. I'm just going to skip this, yeah, guys. Others say it was pretty dark for her to draw such things, but she saw nothing wrong with it. For some strange reason, some shit. For some strange reason, it actually felt like a normal thing to her. What? I know I was going to skip this part, but... I needed to rant for a bit. What? What's normal? I know blood is supposed to be a n normal thing in, inside your body because every every living thing, or at least almost every living thing, has blood inside them. But damn, like, like, but but the gore, people being stabbed, knives and macabre things, like. That's fucking, it's fucking getting out of control, like, for real. To me, is it me, or is Natalie feeling more like a goth by this point? A goth slash emo person. This emo bitch likes to draw, like, people getting hurt or killed, like, for real. Damn. Fuck. Miss Ulet. She quickly covered the dose on her paper and looked up at a French teacher, teacher quickly, trying to hide her fear. Uh, yes, Mr. Levasseur. With a slight turn of his head, he gestured to move her arm and, sh and to show me your work. She instantly moved her arm and saw the pictures and shit. And Natalie smiled nervously. And then the teacher told, tells her to erase her work. Okay? And this is that. Your time is almost up. And get your work done. I was just doing it now. Oh my god. Like, for oh I, Like, she growled at the remark. Time always seems to be against her. What the fuck? For real. Like, I need to rant about this shit right now. Like, time... Like, it's... I think it's because she is bad at managing time, pretty much. Like, for real. Like, how could time not be on your side? Like, for real. Time will always move forward, Nelly. No matter what you say. No matter what anybody says, time doesn't wait for nobody, for real. And that, and that's, just, and that's facts, for real. Time is always moving forward, always, <laughs> and never stopping. Moving forward, moving, moving forward, unless, unless the daylight savings time ends. 
and when it ends, it just pushes back to one hour. But but you still you still get my point, yeah, guys. So yeah. And she and she says, "Time to go fuck itself." Like for real. Like what the hell is wrong with this girl? For real. I get that she was abused back at home, but but that does not give you the right to go to go against time for real. Because you shouldn't. After class, she walked to a boyfriend who was sitting near the fence on the sidewalk. She smiled and walked over, hoping he had something to say that would cheer her up. On this miserable lit day. But as she walked closer, her smile slowly faded. He wasn't smiling back. Chris was wrong. Want to talk to me about something? Or what do you want to talk to me about? He sighed. Nally, it's time to start seeing other people. Which which is him basically saying that he wa- he wants to break up with Nally. So, yeah. This is because of the shit. Because that Nally just creeps Chris out. And shit like that. And she says, he says, I'm sorry. Can't, can't do it anymore. Alright. Okay. So, yeah. See how much we got left. Okay. Natalie slammed her hands in the bathroom counter at home. She stared at herself in the mirror. Her eye twitching. I won't hurt myself like the others. I can stay strong. Like for a... Like, I know, I know you're upset that Chris broke up with you, but at least you'll get over it, at least. Don't worry. It's okay to be heartbroken just because they broke up with your ass. Just stay strong. You'll, you'll eventually get over it. And you might, you might even find someone else. That you like, or, uh, or like, uh, or loves you, or something like that. Don't worry. There was a needle and a black thread in her hand. It's pointless. It doesn't help. Some weird s- sensation pulled at her subconscious. She chuckled slightly. No, I'm doing it because I want to. That basically is, explains all the, all the shit that she's that she's do- doing. Or done. She held up the needle or thread on the other of it and smirked. Time is up. Piece after piece, cut after cut. Even though excruciating pain was going through her, she did not whine. She did not whimper. She did not cry. There was no more tears to shed. All she did was smile. Blood leaked from the pierces and made a low dripping noise into the sink onto the counter when she fi- was finished she stood back and admired her handiwork she stroked the horrendous stitches on the sides of her mouth which spread into a wide smile oh my fucking god is this the shit that you you're doing once you're fucking broken up with your boyfriend or some shit? Like, what the fuck, Nally? I'm beginning to hate Nally with this story, or at least I've been hating her since like the end of part one or some shit like that. She felt the warm, wet blood on her fingers and licked it gently. 
because it ain't the metallic tasting liquid up here. I don't know how to pronounce this word. I'm going to try to pronounce it. And sorry for the mispronunciation in advance. S to C. She stopped when she saw her mother's reflection in the mirror behind her. Sharply turned around. She saw her mother's wide eyes and pale face. She looked up. Fingers seeing the blood. She suddenly felt the pain. Began to cry. Mom? Now he cried. I never felt so confused. What just happened to her? Her mother had scheduled some therapy for her. Now he had gone bare the stitches in fear of how much pain it would bring. So she went to see the session with them. She made sure her hood was up. I was not letting anyone see. He sat down on a comfortable letter C. Stared at the blonde woman across her across from her in silence. So your name's Natalie, isn't it? Natalie Natalie I'm Deborah. And I'm here to help. Now tell me Natalie What have been some of your problems recently? Natalie stared. Time time's been my problem. Deborah Gave her a confused look. What about time, dear? Nellie's hands roughly gripped the letter of the sea. Everything. It makes you live through it, slowly processing through life, being controlled by society, only being tortured to seemingly no end until you find that you no longer have a purpose. It's a vicious circle. Time does not end. It does not slow down. It does not speed up. It is violent. It is, it is not violent, Nally. Like, you're just fucking stupid. Huh? It makes you live through the torture over and over again. Unable to fast forward through any of it. Nally really had no idea what she just said. She felt like she wasn't herself anymore. Could, could it, this be because of all the things she had kept contained? No. That was impossible. It was some strange... But for shit. But for some strange reason, she liked it. The therapist leaned in closer. Sweetheart, I want you to tell me what's happened to you. Nellie continues staring. There is a long pause. She smirked slightly. The wounds of her stitches opened slightly once again. Why don't you tell me, Blondie? You're the expert. Deborah appeared mildly annoyed. Nellie, I can't help unless you tell me what's wrong. Nellie's fingers started to tear into the last scene. Nellie isn't here anymore. With that, Deborah's eyes wide, and she rose onto her feet. Uh, I'll be right back. Please stay here. She walked out, leaving Natalie alone. Maybe if she had done something at this point, she would have had to come to be what she is today. Maybe more people would be alive. Maybe she would be sane like she has been before. Like, Deborah just, le just left her. Nally's ass. After Nally saying that sh that that Nally isn't here anymore, as like if she was if she was even threatening her for real, it's not it sounded like a a fucking threat. As much as. Right. As much as I would love to say that Nellie got up from that chair and stopped what came next from happening, I obligated, or, or I'm obligated to give 
knew the horrid truth. Natalie did not move. She sat perfectly still, in total silence, absolutely calm, in that chair. And after a while of waiting impatiently, parents walked in. Natalie stood happy to go, but she noticed her parents' expressions. Even the father had a strange, sad expression in his face. Yeah, because you abused her by by your shouting. Her confusion grew, but she said nothing and followed him, them to the car. On the way, she, well, she thought she was going back home. She started to drift fall off. Strangely, she heard a dark voice spoken in her dreams. It almost sounded like her own, echoing the internal abyss. Your time is up. She shot awake and some beads of sweat flowing down her face. She wasn't home. She was, wasn't in a car. She was in a bed, a white bed in a white room. She looked into her side and realized she was hooked up to a heart monitor. She attempted to get up, but that, but she realized she was, that she was restrained. She panicked. She began to struggle, but paused. And she heard the door open to her left. Man in a white shirt looked at her hands behind back. She was out oh, one of the cliche doctors based on the television program set in the scientific lab. She paid full attention as Mr. Scientist started to speak. I can only imagine how very confused you might be right now. So but I'm letting you know you're we're only here to help. Your parents agree to allow us to administrate medications to you in hopes of helping your stay in line. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. I could tell she's in a mental hospital pretty much. Oh, boy. I hate when shit happens. Mental hospitals, uh, they're pretty much bad news in real life. I know some metaspos actually help you and let you go after a while, but oh boy, I heard stories of mental hospitals and most of them are not good. Like, they don't give a fuck about you. Some of them don't even give a fuck about you. They'll fucking kill you or use you as an experiment or some shit like that. Well, well, well. Others, at least others, they'll try to. They'll actually try to help you and let you out after a while. So yeah, so like it's it's like a fifty fifty chance with with a mental hospital. So yeah. Now I open her mouth. To protest, but quick, was quickly silenced. Don't you don't need to worry. The doctor, sorry, you don't, you don't need to worry. The doctor sought to reassure her. You'll be back to normal in no time. Just try to relax. He walked over as he did, and she tried to skit skillish. <laughs> like once when I hear this word skit skit to skittishly, I usually thought of skittles at first, but I actually I actually don't know what this word actually means. So she tried to move away, but was unable to do to do to less just binding her wrists and and legs. He carefully took a mask and put it over her mouth and nose. She stubbornly tried to get it off. She felt herself starting to slip under as the drugs kicked in and slowly her eyes shut. Oh, shit. i am wondering, what the hell is going to happen to her? Find out in the next episode, yeah, guys, of Krabby Pastas TV.
Yep. I'll see you guys next time.